Today, we're going to learn about analog signals. We'll explore how a level transmitter works with a PLC, Programmable Logic Controller, or DCS, Distributed Control System. We'll follow the path of an analog signal from the transmitter to the PLC and how it controls our processes. By the end of this video, you'll understand how to handle PLC DCS analog input and output, how raw sensor values are turned into useful information, why the accuracy of measurements called bit resolution is important, how we check for problems like overflow and underflow, and how the PLC sends commands to control devices that manage our processes. Before we get started, if you enjoy our videos, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to stay updated on our latest content. Let's begin with a quick look at analog signals. Unlike digital signals, which are either on or off, analog signals represent a continuous range of values. Take a tank level, for instance. It's not just full or empty, but could be anywhere in between, like 3 meters or 7.5 meters. Analog signals capture this range, giving us more precise data for better process control. In our example, we have a level transmitter in the tank. It measures the level and sends out a current signal between 4 and 20 milliamps to represent it, with 4 milliampers meaning the tank is empty and 20 milliampers meaning it's full. Before we move further, let's quickly talk about two types of transmitters you'll commonly see in industrial setups, two-wire and three-wire transmitters. Two-wire transmitters. Widely used in automation, these have two wires that carry both power and the signal. In a 4 to 20 milliampere setup, the transmitter draws its power from the current loop, which makes installation simpler. Three wire transmitters. These have a separate power wire, making them ideal where more stable power is required or when we need to separate signal and power lines to reduce noise interference. In this example, we're using a two-wire transmitter that's sending a 4 to 20 milliampere signal. This signal travels to the analog input module of our PLC. Now that 4 to 20 milliampere signal arrives at the PLC's analog input module. Here, it's processed by an analog-to-digital converter or ADC. The ADC converts the continuous analog signal into a digital raw value that the PLC can understand. For example, in a 12-bit resolution PLC, this raw value might range from 0 to 4,095 counts. 12-bit resolution means the system can measure 2 to the power of 12 different steps, which is 4,096 steps. So, a 12-bit system can measure a signal in 4096 different values. Minimum value, 0. Maximum value, 4,095 since counting starts from zero. So, as the tank level changes, this raw count changes accordingly. The raw count itself doesn't directly tell us the tank level in meters. It's just a number. To make it meaningful, the PLC scales this raw count into an engineering value, like meters, that we can actually use in our control logic. Here's how this works. If the raw count is zero, the PLC interprets the level as zero meters. If the raw count is 4,095, the PLC knows the tank is at its maximum level, let's say 10 meters. With a simple formula, the PLC converts any raw value from 0 to 4,095 into a level measurement. Now, we can read the exact tank level in meters, rather than just seeing a raw number. Now, let's talk about bit resolution, which affects how precisely the PLC can measure changes in the tank level. In a 12-bit ADC, we get 4,096 possible raw values, from 0 to 4095. But with a 16-bit ADC, the range expands to 65,536 counts, enabling even finer measurements. Why does this matter? Higher bit resolution means smaller steps between raw values, so our engineering values become more precise. That increased precision means better control and accuracy in our system. What happens if our tank reaches its maximum or minimum level? This is where overflow and underflow checks help us. 
In our PLC, we can set alarm limits based on either the raw values or the engineering values. For instance, if the raw count reaches 3980, a high-level alarm can warn us that the tank is close to full. If it falls below 100, a low-level alarm can alert us that the tank's almost empty. These alarms are essential in automation to help prevent spills, equipment damage, or costly downtimes. Once we've monitored the tank level and ensured everything is within safe limits, we might need to control the process by adjusting the flow or level in the tank. This is where output cards and final control elements come into play. Output cards. Output cards in the PLC are used to send control signals to different devices in the field. They could send an analog signal like 4 to 20 milliamperes to control valves or actuators based on the desired set points. Final control elements. These are the devices that make physical changes to the process. Common examples include valves, pumps, and actuators. For instance, if the tank level gets too high, the PLC might signal a valve to open, allowing liquid to flow out and reduce the level. The PLC takes the engineering values it has processed from the input signals and uses them to decide when to send commands to these final control elements. By doing so, it maintains the desired level or flow rate in the tank, ensuring the entire process stays within safe and efficient operating limits. Let's put it all together with a quick example. The transmitter in the tank sends a 4 to 20 milliamperes signal representing the tank level. The PLC's analog input module reads this signal and converts it into a raw digital value through the ADC. The PLC scales this raw value to an engineering unit like meters so we can read the exact tank level. If the level is too high or too low, the PLC triggers alarms to alert us and keep the system safe. The PLC sends a control signal via the output card to a valve, our final control element, to adjust the tank level as needed. And that's the complete journey of an analog signal in automation, from raw values all the way through to control actions. By understanding scaling, bit resolution, overflow, underflow checks, and final control elements, we see how PLCs keep our processes accurate and safe. If you enjoyed this walkthrough, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you stay up to date with IT and Automation Academy's latest content. Thanks for watching and see you next time.